Thank you for taking the time to watch this message. Gospel Light is a place where the Bible is preached and people are loved. If this message encourages you, please send an email to glbcbr at hotmail.com and let us know how you were helped. Thank you again for watching. Now let's get ready to grow through God's Word. Prayer, it's taken from Ephesians chapter number 6. Look at verse number 18 and we'll read to verse 20. The Bible says in verse 18, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador into bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. The focal point really is in verses 18 and 19, but we see a big picture that we want to finish with in the message in verses 19 and 20. Let's pray, and uh, let's have every head bowed, every eye closed at this, at this time. And I just want you to do something this morning. With heads bowed and eyes closed, I just want you to, in, your, in the quietness of your heart, I want you to ask God this morning, God, would you speak to me? Ask him. Ask him to do that. Ask him to help you avoid the slump of, of spring forward. I, I'm tired just like y'all this morning. But we didn't come just to miss a message. We came to uh, uh, digest a message spiritually and then to live it out. Say, God, speak to me. Don't let me be distracted. And then I want you to finish with this. God, whatever you speak to me about, I'm going to obey it. Whatever you speak to me about this morning, I'm going to obey it. Father, we love you, and we thank you for this time in your word. God, I pray uh, that you would be exalted in everything that's said and done. And Lord, we ask and pray as we look at this thought of being rooted in prayer, God, that uh, we would uh, not just be content with where we are spiritually in prayer, uh, but that we would grow deeper in our walk with you in the aspect of prayer. And God, for those that have prayed this morning to have you speak to them, I pray that you would speak to them this morning. I pray for those that have prayed, God, whatever you speak to me about, I'm going to obey. God, I pray that you would give them the uh, obedience to do so, the power to do so. And Lord, perhaps for the one this morning that's lost without Christ, they don't know Jesus as their Savior. God, I pray today, before it's eternally too late, that they would pray and trust the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. God, bless this time in Jesus' name and all God's people said, thank you so much. You may be seated. Well, as you can see this morning, we are back in our study through the uh, thought process of our theme this year of being rooted in Him. And today we are taking a key aspect of the Christian life. You know, as you look at the book of Ephesians, it was written by the Apostle Paul. And you will notice that the Apostle Paul was aware of something that often many of us as Christians overlook. And that is without the power of prayer, we do not have the power of God. If we do not have prayer in our life, we cannot expect God to bless in a mighty and powerful way. Uh, we would want power in soul winning. We would want power in discipleship. We want power in adding to our church through membership. We want power over sin. How many want victory over sin this morning? And it comes by praying to the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the foundation. Listen, if you forget everything else this morning, don't miss this. The foundation of your Christian life must be prayer to God. Would you and I have a foundation that is rooted in prayer? I want you to listen to this thought. Dr. John R. Rice, he was the author of The Sword of the Lord, and he said this in one of his messages. He said, all of our failures are prayer failures. Let's say that together, church. All of our failures are prayer failures. Failures. Anytime uh, we have a struggle, anytime we mess up in the Christian life, often we can bring it back to the fact that we never consulted God in prayer. Uh, as, as a pastor here in this ministry, I have people all the time that come to me and they want counsel in various things, and I'm thankful for the, the opportunity to give them counsel, and I'll try to give them some practical ways. But more than ever, what I often will always give them is that they need to make this decision based on taking it to the Lord in prayer. And so I would tell you this morning that if you want to have the mind of Christ, you have to have it 
in prayer. And if you want the leading of Christ, how many want the leading of God in your life? Would you say amen this morning? If you want his leading, you need to have it through prayer. Uh, how many of you have ever prayed before and sensed the leading of God in your life? I can tell you this, when I've not prayed, I've, I seem to be directionless. When I have prayer in my life, I see where God is wanting me to go and what God is wanting me to do, and I've seen him do some marvelous things. Uh, as a kid growing up in Michigan, going to Trinity Baptist Church, uh, there were times in my life as a kid that I would see building programs take place uh, at Trinity Baptist Church. Uh, there's two things that I know about building programs, and I know we're trying to endeavor to do that, and uh, you pray with us on that. We're really trying to set a vision here in the next couple of years for where God wants us to have land and where God wants us to have a building, because how many know 20440, we don't want this to be our permanent address. We want to get out. We want to be able to have our own place and our own property and more buses and more Sunday school classrooms and more teachers seeing people come and trust the Lord Jesus Christ. But in the building process, as I saw my dad being involved in that, these weren't just projects that they spent temporary time on. Uh, and I, I was going to tell you about two things about a building program. Number one, it always costs more than what you anticipate, and it always takes longer than what you always plan for. How many of you know that? And uh, so anyway, but during that process, I can tell in my dad's life, it was a stressful time. People were wondering, how is this going to get done? How is this going to get accomplished? We had a Christian contractor, and we were trying to do a $360,000 project. And the contractor took our money that we gave to him and put it on another building and finished that building, and we were left with nothing. How do you go before a church and say, hey, all the money's gone because the person we hired, that was a... Christian took all the money. I can tell you every single night, there wasn't a night that went by where I did not hear my dad get on his hands and knees and say, God, you need to work in my life. There was moments and hours of prayer. And I'm just telling you the best thing you can do this year, if you forget everything else, is this year being rooted in Christ through the aspect of prayer. That is the foundation of which you and I should be. How many understand this morning you're in a spiritual battle? Do you know that? And it, listen this morning... In the, in the time of battle, there are going to be moments of a, of a lull. There's going to be times of a calm. And what you and I as wise people, what we need to do is we need to be a person, a Christian of prayer. Whether you're the most spiritual, closest to God, or whether you're that new person in Christ, spending time with God in prayer. William Cowper was a weak and frail man. He was a man that lived in England and was abused as a child. Matter of fact, most of his upbringing uh, was raised in foster type environments. And finally he came to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And he was the man that was credited with the song that we sing, There is a Fountain. How many know that song? There is a Fountain. And in, in the Cowper and Newton Museum in only England, if I ever get over to England, that's where I want to go, Brother Jacob. I want to go see that. I want to see all the history of how the Bible was there in England. And in the Cowper and Newton Museum in only England, there's a quote on the wall, very famous of Mr. Cowper, which reads this. Don't miss this this morning. Satan trembles when he sees the weakest Christian on his knees. Satan trembles when he sees the weakest Christian on his knees. I'm just telling you this morning, whether you're the spiritual person or whether you're the new babe in Christ, Satan trembles when he sees a Christian that is in prayer and seeking the Lord. And uh, the truth is this morning, how many understand the devil does a good job of deceiving you to thinking your prayers are not important to God? There's a lot of people that they say, well, pastor, you just pray for this because it's not going to get all the way up to heaven. How many of you know all of us have access to the Father? We all have access to the Father that are saved. And uh, what he does is he makes Christians believe that uh, the pastor is the only one that has access. But I'm thankful this morning that it's not because of my behavior that gives me access to the Father. It's because of the blood of Jesus Christ that gives me access. I'm thankful this morning above all else for the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. That it is his blood that gives me access to the Father in prayer. And so this morning, listen to me. How, how are you going to deepen your walk with Christ when it comes to prayer? And I want to give you three thoughts this morning on being rooted in prayer. If you have a handout uh, there in your bulletin, I encourage you to follow along. Notice number one, we see in the text the process of prayer. We see the process of prayer. If you look at verse number 18 with me, the Bible says, praying always with all prayer. Let's say that expression, church. Ready, begin praying always with all prayer. I'm thankful this morning that God's word doesn't just say, hey, pray. 
Now, it does say in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. That's a pretty blunt statement. And that really uh, 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 complements this expression of praying always with all prayer. But we see there's some specifics to our prayer. And I want you to notice in this process, first letter A, we are to pray thoughtfully. We are to pray thoughtfully. Verse number 18, the expression praying always. I believe this with all of my heart. As you read the epistles of Paul... He was a man that was conscious of the need to pray. And how many of you know it's important to pray for yourself, but how many of you know it's even greater to pray for others as well? And the Apostle Paul in his epistles would often mention this. He would say in Philippians chapter 1, verse 2, Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to this. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making requests with Joy, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. He says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, he's speaking to the church of Thessalonica. He says, We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. If your day is anything like mine, it's a day where the day starts, the war begins, and you don't have a lull during the day. And anybody like that this morning? Uh, you have a day, and it just starts, and as soon as you get up, the kids, I know for me, Leah, you got kids, I got kids. Those of you who have kids this morning, those kids get up early. How many of you know that? And they get in your bed, and they wake you up, say, it's time to get up, it's time to get up, it's time to get up, it's time to get up. And uh, Rebecca, one of the things Rebecca does is she uh, lets Emma crawl on my head. I don't know why, but it does a good job of waking me up in the morning. But I'm just telling you this, that many of us, if we're honest, we have the day start, and if we don't start it in prayer, how many of you know it's not going to be a good day? We need to start our time in prayer. I'm thankful this morning that though uh, uh, my day may be busy from the morning till the evening, I can still get up early and pray. I can still get up in the morning, and I can take time to pray, because I'm going to tell you this, prayerlessness is a dangerous thing. Can I ask you this? Listen to me this morning. Outside of church... When was the last time you prayed? One thing that I often do in the morning on Sunday is I pray that God would speak in our services. That God would have his blessing on our service. I pray for you as the congregation. Listen to me this morning. I pray for the congregation that the congregation would be attentive that you'd be in tune, that you wouldn't be disengaged because guess what? There's nothing more important to be engaged with than God's word. Nothing more important. And when we disengage, we're really in essence saying, God, this isn't important. And how many would say, this is important? And we need to be engaged with the Word of God. Uh, I'll often pray for souls to be saved. Layman Strauss, he said it this way, the enemy, now who's the enemy? Talk to me this morning. Satan. So the enemy watches for prayerlessness in our lives and then takes advantage of us. We must constantly be in prayer because we are constantly in danger. Now, how many understand we're always in danger? There are Christians this morning that they say, well, I'm in church. I'm not in danger. How many know Satan can even attack you even now? We're always on a, a, a Satan's radar. We're always on target. And so what we need to do is not pray less, but to pray more for the Lord Jesus Christ and for others. And so we should pray thoughtfully, being conscious of it. Don't just go through the motions, but be thoughtful in your prayers. But notice, secondly, we're not only to pray thoughtfully, but letter B, we are to pray thoroughly. We are to pray thoroughly. When you've written that down, look at verse number 18. He says, praying always with, say the next two words if you see it there, church, all prayer. Let's say those two words, all prayer together. Ready? All prayer. Say it one more time, nice and loud, Sunday morning on Spring Forward Sunday. All prayer. All prayer. We're to pray thoroughly. Uh, he says with all prayer, it implies praying on all occasions under every condition. Uh, Paul writing to Timothy, his young son in the faith, he says in 1 Timothy 2, he says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. So you see four components of prayer. Uh, there are different kinds of facets to prayers that we give. I want you to write this in your notes. It's not there in your handout there. But different kinds of prayers. I want you to write the word acts. A-C-T-S. We're going to give an understanding to each of those letters of different kinds of prayers. And letter A is adoration. 
Adoration. We sing the Christmas song, Oh, come let us adore him. Adoration. You know what you should do before you begin to ask God for things? You ought to take time in your prayer to adore him. Because he is good. And I tell you what, he is a wonderful God. I don't have time to tell you this testimony, but God delayed my flight six hours in Dallas-Fort Worth just so that Mitchell would pray and trust Christ. He is a wonderful God. And I took that time after I led him to Christ to say, God, I was frustrated, the devil was opposing, but you gave an opportunity, and I was obedient to it, and I just want to take some time to adore you. You know, I don't think we spend enough time adoring God. I think if we did spend more time adoring God, it would change our worship on Sunday. It would change our, de our uh, devotion time uh, uh, each day of the week. Would we spend time to adore him? So that's letter A. That's a type of prayer. And you know what? Hey, guess what? It's okay if all you do in your prayer is adore him, and that's it. That's okay. Spending time just adoring him and not asking for anything at all, because how many know when he gave his son, he gave you everything you need? So spending time adoring him, letter C, is confession. Confession prayers. Hey, Lord, this was an area of my life that I messed up, or this was an area that I messed up today or yesterday or whatever it was. I'm going to confess that to you. How many are thankful for 1 John chapter 1, verse 9? If we confess our sins, he is what? Faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So there's adoration, there's confession. Notice letter T, there's thanksgiving. There's giving of thanks. Giving God thanks. And how many of you know you can do that apart from just the Thanksgiving holiday? So, so many of us, we come to the Thanksgiving time and we give God thanks for November and the last week there. And then we just, that's our segment of time that we give God thanks. I'm thankful for uh, America and for the time that it's set aside for Thanksgiving. But I believe God's people always should be giving thanks. I think we always should. So there's adoration, there's confession, there's Thanksgiving. Then notice letter, or letter S, there's supplication supplication this uh this carries the idea of an entreaty a petition to god for us and for others some of you you got burdens this morning and you need to spend time supping with god and supplicating with him and expressing your concerns i wrote this in my notes sometimes we can be so busy and honestly wonder what there is to pray about how many understand there's a lot that we can pray about there's a lot of things that we can pray about. Uh, look at your text, though. Look at verse 18. I want to break this down. Verse 18, he says, Praying always with all, say the next word, prayer. Okay, so prayer is uh, uh, specifically here what, what Dr. John R. Rice said is prayer is simply asking. How many are thankful for the verse in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, where it says, Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. You have not because you what? Ask not. If you want God to save somebody in your family, ask him. He will hear you. The Bible says if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. There's a lot of people that misinterpret that verse. They say, if we ask anything according to his, uh, according to his will, he giveth us. How many know he doesn't always give us what we want? But how many thankful he always gives us what we need? And uh, so he says, with all prayer... Uh, if you need a job this morning, ask for it. If you need grace this morning, ask for it. Whatever it is, ask for it. We have not because we ask not. Notice verse 18 again. Praying always with all prayer and, say the next word, supplication. Uh, I just said this a moment ago, but supplication is the idea of an entreaty. It's a petition to God for us and for others. You know, sometimes on Wednesday night, uh, we, we give out requests that are rather burdensome, and there are people that pray, and they are supplicating to God on behalf of somebody else. How many know it's possible to have wayward children? And there are parents in this room I know that every single service or even every single day are supplicating with God, asking on behalf of that person to turn back to the Lord. And how many know he hears those prayers too? I, I, there's things that I do on behalf of you. You may not know this and realize this, but there are almost every single day I'm praying for one specific area of our ministry and specifically for those workers. I'm speaking to God for your behalf because I want God to work and I want God to move in a miraculous way. But notice what it says in verse 18. There is a prepositional phrase that he says, in all prayer and supplication. But notice what it says it says, praying always, with all prayer and supplication, say the next three words with me, in the Spirit. How many think it's important that we pray in the Spirit? You ever prayed in the flesh before? 
I have. God, why did you do this? You know, I've argued with God before. God, why is this happening? God, I need you to resolve this now. Uh, I did it even on this trip. God, I've been sitting in this airport for three hours. I'm ready to go to San Diego. I'm ready to go there and be a blessing to people and to preach and to hear preaching. God, why aren't you doing this? That was in the flesh. And then there was a moment in that time where I just said, Lord, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And you know what? I'm thankful his will was done because if I would have done my own thing, Mitchell never would have heard the gospel. But I'm thankful this morning that he heard the gospel and trusted Christ. Uh, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, the Prince of Preachers, he said it this way, prayer is an art which only the Spirit can teach us. Prayer is an art which only the Spirit can can teach us. Now listen to me. I don't want to judge people's prayers this morning, but I want you to evaluate, is it possible that we can become mechanical in our prayers? And what God wants us to do is not be mechanical and, and, and do the same old, same old, same old. Yes, we want to pray every single day, but we want to have a freshness. We want to have a newness of the Spirit and praying in the Spirit. Because I'm telling you this, it's a wonderful thing to be led by the Spirit in prayer. You know what that's like? Let me explain that to you. When you are led by the Spirit in prayer, He puts things on your heart that you weren't even thinking of when you began praying. He begins putting people in your life that uh, uh, you weren't even thinking about. The Bible says He gives you groanings which cannot be what? Utter. Things that you don't even know how to say. And God, through the Spirit, just shows you what it is you need to pray. Uh, that's from Romans chapter 8, verse 26, where it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Uh, as a Christian, you ought to be heavily dependent upon prayer. Can I j just, just evaluate this this morning? How dependent are you on the idea of praying to God? Can I put it to you this way? Is prayer your steering wheel, or is it just your spare tire? I only pray when I have problems. How many of you know it's a good thing to pray when you have problems, and all God's people say? But how many of you know it's a good thing to pray when you don't have problems? Oh, phew, man, I, I don't like problems, so anytime I don't have problems... I want to praise God that I don't have any issues, that I don't have any health problems, that I don't have any trials. It broke my heart this week when I was preaching. And uh, one of the pastors came up to me, and most of these pastors that came and these church people, apart from the church, they were church planters. They really push and make an emphasis in church planting. And this one particular pastor, man, he was, he was excited. He was amen, and he was uh, all into the music. He was excited. And you would think from the outset that everything is great in his life. He planted a church in West Los Angeles, and he's trying to get a church started in East Los Angeles. And I shook his hand. His name's AJ. I want you to pray for him. And he said, Pastor, we don't know what we're doing this Sunday because things have blown up at our churches. We, we just don't know where we're going to meet. The people that opened up the location, the facility, they got mad at us. We're not meeting there. And how many of you know there are people in this room, you, you may have circumstances this morning that are tough, and how many know there's always somebody that has it worse than you? We need to be careful of that and be in prayer. I wrote this in my notes as well. We say we are too busy to pray, but as I follow the example of the Lord, the more busy he was, the more he prayed. And what you and I need to do is not be too busy to pray. There's the process of prayer. Notice, secondly, number two, the passion of prayer. The passion of prayer. So we see the process. We need to be thoughtful in our prayers. We need to be thorough. Don't, don't give God second best. Give him your very best. And then we see number two, the passion of prayer. I want you to notice in verse number 18, it says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance. We've looked, in essence, at our preparation to prayer, that we should put some thought and some thoroughness, some depth to it. But now what Paul is saying is, here is what your attitude should be when you pray and even after you pray. And so I want you to notice two thoughts this morning. You should have an attitude of expectation. You should have an attitude of expectation. Notice what the text says. We want to speak what the text is saying this morning, not man's philosophy. It says in verse 18, 
praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. So you pray. This is your preparation. Then look what the next word says. And what's the next word? Watching. Watching thereunto with all perseverance. The idea of watching is a state of vigilance. It's a state of expectation to see God answer your prayer. Because God not only wants you to pray, but he wants you to pray expecting God to answer your prayer. Do you think it's possible for Christians to just pray and not expect God to answer? There's a lot of people that do that. We need to be people that that not only pray, but we pray expecting we're vigilant. Kind of reminds me of the uh, uh, border there, the line of demarcation there in the uh, uh, nations of South Korea and North Korea. There is a, a body of water. I can't remember what the name of it is. But there are people on the border of South Korea that are there every single, uh, uh, every single minute of every single day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And they are vigilantly, watch, vigilantly watching the gate. And they are watching the water. Because how many know there's an enemy to the north? I don't know if you've heard of them. But it's called North Korea. How many heard North Korea? And there are people on the South Korean border that are watching for people that are going under the water trying to sneak into North Korea. They're vigilant. And what we need to do is when we pray, we need to be vigilant, not just pray and walk away, but we need to remember that God is always working. When you're in your trial this morning, listen to me. Remember that God is always working. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Hey, can I ask you a question this morning? Did any of you pray for God to save souls this morning? Did any of you pray other than up until the message, God, would you speak to me this morning? I'm going to tell you this. A church that is praying and a church that is asking God is a church that is going to see the power of God. But a church that is not praying, a church that is not asking, a church that is not seeking, I believe with all my heart, is not going to experience the power of God. Are you with me this morning? We need to be a church that is asking God, God, would you save souls today? You need to be praying for Brother Rob's on that bus route that he can bring new people in to hear the gospel. You need to be praying for those that go out on Saturday, knocking on doors and other people making visits, that God would do a miraculous work in our church, that you would constantly be praying and expecting God to produce. And can I ask you a question? This is me included. Why do we act so surprised when God answers our prayer? We pray for a soul to get saved this morning, and somebody gets saved. Wow! We asked, didn't we? He heard us according to his will. So have an attitude of expectation, but notice letter B. This is where many of us falter, is an attitude of endurance. There's the attitude of expectation, watching God work, uh, 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 expecting God to work. But then he says, have an attitude of endurance in your prayers. Notice verse number 18 praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And then it says, and watching thereunto, say the next three words with me if you see it, with all perseverance. Let's say that one more time, church. With all perseverance. You know, I think if we're honest with ourselves this morning, sometimes we give up too easily on God in our prayers. Uh, If we get a response of no or wait, you know what we tend to think? It's not going to happen. How many like the answer no when God tells you no or wait? Uh, Matter of fact, I was looking at trying to purchase. I got this new iPad here in California, and uh, my wife and I were trying to set some uh, money aside so that would help for me to be able to purchase one of those things. And and I said, honey, I think we got the money now. Can I go ahead and purchase it now? How many are like instant gratification people that when you got the money, you're like, I want to go out and buy it right now? And my wife, I, I talked to her, she said, I don't know about that, honey. Okay, I'm going to go do it anyway. <laughs> no, I, I said, okay, I'll just wait one day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow, and we'll see if the Lord changes your mind then. I'm going to pray that the Lord changes your mind and expect him to do it, okay? That was an attitude of wanting more than in, uh, expecting. But an attitude of endurance. Uh, we ought not grow weary in praying for land at this church. We ought not grow weary about God bringing about a building for this ministry. 
We ought not be weary about growth, whether spiritual or numerical at this church. We ought not grow weary about souls being saved. Uh, Thomas H. Palmer, and many of you have had a teacher that has said this before, if at first you don't succeed, what does the expression go? Try, try again. Listen to me. Some of us need to try and try again to pray for lost relatives and loved ones that need Christ. Some of us need to try again and pray for those large needs that we have. Some of us need to try again and pray to God to bless us with land and a building. Uh, I can tell you this morning, we have a person in our church that prayed for many, many years for her husband to get saved. Miss Esther, we prayed how many years at this church for Walter to get saved? Long time. And how, listen to me. How many of you know that God heard every single prayer every single time it was prayed for Walter? He heard every single one of them. Brother Warren Johnson tried to lead uh, uh, Walter to Christ. Brother Roger, I know when he was here, multiple times tried to go and talk with Walter, and then finally we got a phone call. I don't know if it was you that called Brother Roger or if it was Walter that called Brother Roger and said, I'm ready. And how many know when somebody's ready to get saved, they're ready to get saved? And that moment was a beautiful thing. What would have happened if we would have had no endurance and just said, you know what? Would we not give up on God? Uh, the Bible says in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, it says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray, and what does it say? If you know it, say it with me, and not to faint. Don't faint spiritually in your Christian walk. Trust God. Pray with expectation that he's going to bless. Pray with endurance. Don't stop praying for whatever it is because God hears your prayer. But notice finally as we close, we see the people of prayer. We see the people of prayer. He says here in verse 18, he says, Praying always with all prayer, and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and then he says this and supplication for all now he's going to give us some people that we're going to pray for but let me ask you this how many of you just curious I, I don't want to embarrass anybody but how many of you you grew up in a religion where you had to go to a priest in order to have your prayers answered anybody like that this morning hands all over the building uh, brother Jeff you remember when we went to St. Patrick's Cathedral and I mean, it, it is a, how many ever been to St. Patrick's Cathedral that hasn't been on the missions trip maybe? Uh, it, it is a massive, massive, beautiful structure. But one of the saddest things in that whole entire building are people lining up to talk to a priest. People paying money and indulgence to have their prayers prayed to the saints and hoping that that gets up there and that they get their friends out of purgatory or get their, their loved ones out of hell. How many of you know you're thankful this morning that you don't have to come to a pastor, you don't have to come to a priest, you can go to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You have 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you don't need to come and bring your prayers to me. Now granted, if you bring a prayer request to me, I'm going to pray for it, but how much more powerful a person to go to, not a pastor, but going to God Almighty. What a wonderful thing that is. And so this morning, what are the people of prayer? Notice first letter A, we see he asks prayer for all saints. He calls us in verse 18, he says, supplication for all saints. Now listen to me this morning. We do not pray to the saints, but we pray for the saints. How many know there's a very big difference in that? We aren't praying to Peter. We aren't praying to you name the person. We are praying to God Almighty on behalf of our fellow believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. That expression in verse 18 at the end, it says, supplication for all saints. This is speaking of the fellowship of believers. I love what J. Vernon McGee said about the uh, people in this world. He says there's two kinds of people in this world. There are saints and there are ain'ts. I, I know that's not good grammar, but how many understand that's pretty solid theology? You're either saved and you're a saint or you're lost without Christ and you're not on your way to heaven. But how many understand if you place your faith and trust in Christ, you can go to heaven? And I'm thankful for that. Um, and and I, I spoke on this this morning just briefly, but remember, you're not saints because of your behavior. Because <laughs> how many of you know, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. We're not saved. We're not saints because of our behavior. We're saints because of the blood of Jesus Christ. 
Think about this. We often pray for what we love, for what is important to us, and for what involves us. Let me ask you, how much are you praying for others? Has anybody prayed for the church this week? I pray so. Has anybody been praying for our shut-ins, Miss Frances Shook, Marianne McDaniels, uh, 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 Miss Norma Buckles, praise the Lord, she's here this morning, and others. Praying for all saints. What do we need to pray for with our saints? I think first we need to pray for power. How many want the power of God at Gospel Life Baptist Church? We want to have that power. Let's not, let's not our, our greatest regret be a gospel light that we did not see the power of God. Don't miss this this morning. D.L. Moody said this, Next to the wonder of seeing my Savior will be, I think, the wonder that I made so little use of the power of prayer. It's going to be a great day when we see Christ and all God's people said, but would our greatest regret not be, wow, if I just would have prayed for this, God would have answered. If I would have just kept praying for this person, and if I would have just kept praying for this issue, and if I would have just kept praying for this wayward child, or if I would have just kept praying for this financial need, or if I would have just kept praying for this building, for this land, what a powerful God we would have seen. Would our greatest regret not, or would our greatest regret not be that we made so little use of the power of prayer? We need to pray for power, but we need to pray for protection. We need to pray for people in this ministry that we would be safe, that we would pray for people's health. How many know, when, as you get older, your health goes down a little bit? And we need to pray for that. We need to pray for healing. There are various people in our ministry. I want to encourage you to pray for people in our ministry that need physical healing. But I think also we need to pray for people in our ministry that need spiritual healing. There may be some in this room that you need spiritual healing from bitterness. You need spiritual healing and forgiveness. You need spiritual healing and whatever it is. Somebody did you wrong. And I understand being in a church, being a pastor's kid, there's a lot of people that will hurt you. But I'm thankful for those people that helped me through prayer. So pray for protection. The Bible says in Luke 21, verse 36, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Don't miss this this morning. We can't expect God to just bless us here if we're going to ignore prayer. Did you, did you hear that this morning? It, it, the Bible says the prayer of a righteous man availeth what? Availeth much. It tells a lot about the person. It shows them. We can't expect God to bless at our church if none of us are praying at all during the week. Man, let me encourage you. Take some time. If, if you have your own prayer schedule, continue with that. But one thing that I want to encourage those that are not on a praying schedule or things to specifically pray for Man, pray on Saturday. You can't be out soul winning, but you can pray for those soul winners that are out. You can pray for discipleship that goes on on Sunday night. And I think we're pretty close on discipleship and finishing up here. It's almost done. We got a couple people that are finishing up discipleship. I got a couple people that have expressed interest in being a part of discipleship. But we ought to be praying for that. You ought to pray for your Sunday school teachers. Saturday night, pray for your Sunday school teachers. Pray for those things. Pray for all areas of our ministry because if we're not praying and we expect God to just bless, it's not going to happen. We have to pray. So pray for all saints and then finally let her be. Pray for all sinners. Pray for all sinners. Now, how many understand we're all sinners and all God's people said? We're, we're all sinners, but specifically we're referring to in this text what I believe Paul's referring to are those that are lost without Christ. We need to pray for the lost. Look at verses 19 and 20 as we close this morning. He says, And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the what, church? The gospel. So we proclaim the gospel to what group? Saved or unsaved? We proclaim it mostly to those that are lost without Christ. Yes, we proclaim the gospel to you this morning, even though you're a saved individual. But Paul is asking for utterance on behalf of the church at Ephesus to pray for uh, utterance to be given when proclaiming to the lost people. Verse 20, he says, For which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. 
And so we see here he is asking the Ephesians to pray for the preaching of those that are lost without Christ. I love this quote. J. Sidlow Baxter, he said this, Men may spurn our appeals. They may reject our message. They may oppose our arguments. They may despise our persons, but they are helpless against our prayers. I love that. That there are people that they can reject the message of the gospel at the door. They can say, you're a looney tune for Christ. You can, they can do whatever they want to try to oppose us physically. But how many you know when we go before our Father in prayer, they can't stop that? They can't stop the power of prayer when we pray for those people. And so when we uh, uh, come to uh, reaching people that are lost without Christ, we can't all go on every soul winning event. But how many you know you can all pray? Are you here this morning? Y'all can't go on every soul winning outreach, but you can always pray. Uh, You can't always be at church, but you can always pray. There was an elderly lady, I I remember it like it was yesterday, she came up and uh, my dad was was filling in for the pulpit for our church and there was an elderly elderly lady that came down and she was probably in her 90s, she's passed on and is with the Lord today. And uh, my dad would stand down here, and many pastors back then would stand down here, and even till, still to this day, they'd stand down here. If God's spoken to you about something, why don't you come and take my hand, and, and I'll pray for you, or uh, whatever God's revealed to you, let me know, and I'll pray with you right here. And this lady came right down the aisle, and he had preached on soul winning, soul winning, soul winning all morning, you know, and preaching about the Great Commission. And this lady came down, and my dad tells the story. He's like, I was thinking she was wanting to get involved in soul winning, and I was thinking how much, how much of her health can handle going out and knocking on doors. And she grabbed my dad's hand and she said, Pastor, I can do two things. I can give a lot of money and I can pray. And those were the two words that she said to my dad. She said, Pastor Scott, I can give a lot of money to the church and I can pray. And you know what? I believe with all my heart that she was a person that gave and that prayed for the ministry needs of of, of Trinity Baptist Church. So listen to me, there is a biblical pattern of prayer this morning. Saints that are in Christ, praying for other saints in Christ. You ought to be praying for your brothers and sisters in Christ. And then there are saints in Christ that are praying for sinners without Christ. Now look at our text, verse 19 and 20. He says, and for me that, say the next word, church, utterance. Say it one more time, church, utterance. He says, and for me that utterance may be given unto me. True, listen to me, true biblical utterance is not acquired by a diploma of any kind. True biblical utterance is acquired by the giving of God Almighty. And that's what we want at this church. I pray that if if anything else on Sunday, that you would pray for me, that utterance would be given to me to communicate clearly what it is that God has revealed to me. And that I would be able to communicate it so that you would be able to take it and understand it. This issue of prayer, I'm just going to tell you, our, our church is only as strong as we pray. We may have on a given Sunday a hundred. Think about how powerful a church would be if every single one of us were praying for Gospel Light Baptist Church. How many of us this week even thought about it? The says, did you think to pray? Did we even think to pray at all for gospel light? Did we think to pray for the uh, uh, bus ministry as they went out on Saturday? Did we think to pray for the Sunday school teachers this morning as they presented their lessons? Did we even think to pray? Yes, we're going to think to pray for ourselves. We ought to pray for others. Pray for souls to be saved. Pray for people to be added into our ministry. I don't know about you, but when God says, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled, he wasn't speaking metaphorically. He was speaking literally. That he wanted the bride of Christ, the church of the living God, to not be an empty dust bowl. He wants it to be filled with people. But it's going to begin by us praying. And i got to be honest with you, as your pastor, this is one of the areas that I have to discipline myself the most in. It's prayer. Praying before service. I love Scotty. Scotty always gets my mind on prayer. Miss Lynn, every single Sunday, every single service, pray. Pray. Does, does Scotty do that to anybody here? Just me. Okay. Because I need it. And he'll come up to me and, Miss Lynn, I know that I get busy, but how many of you know the story of Mary and Martha? Martha was cumbered about with what? Much serving. 
And Jesus said, Martha, Martha. Hey, can you put your name in this morning? I know it's a different context, but think about this. I add my name, Tyler, Tyler. You're so cumbered about with your job. You're so cumbered about with your hobbies. You're so cumbered about with your wants. Did you even think to pray? Rooted in prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed this morning. I want to ask you.